Alright, so, here, you, because you found my plugin interesting and wanted to learn more, or you looked at it and accidentally clicked on it, in which case, please don't go. I promise this is cool. Anyways, as you can see here, we have this new tab here. It all generates everything once you enable it in the plugin tab. You'll find it on the asset store as well. Probably how you found it, actually. You'll notice we have this, this, all these over here. And you have this tab, code view, and groups. This is my personal test group. It's probably there because I haven't removed it. But it's there to show you how this works and that it functions. You can press F1, F2, and F3 to go through here. And it blocks you from accidentally deleting stuff while in this area. So, as you can see, got this. The way this system works is we have positions, rotation, scale. If you were to chain them in a straight line, they'd run at the same time, and the next of the same type would run after the first. Meaning, if I have position, rotation, scale, position, this position will run the moment this one finishes, even if these two are in the middle of them. If you wanted to run after all of these, you do a sync parameters and set position. Now everything after this will run after all of these. Guaranteeing this runs only when these are all done. We have the math, which is this list here. We have the vectors, which also has all the math stuff in them that function for it. We have the variable typings and anything that uses a float, which includes composing and decomposing vectors as well, just like in the vector area. I have the two test functions I have, which are test and test2. See here, this one does st starting from the item's origin minus however much space I'm having it pushed outwards. Then it scales itself up and moves out. So this runs, this runs, whenever this is done, runs this one, even if this one is still running. Which results in this. You can press keys like W, S, D, or Shift D for this, which steps it. You can also press R to reset it, back to the start of the animation, which stays paused in step mode, or unpaused based on which you have it set to. You can change the type of container shown between the round, horizontal, and vertical ones. As you can tell, the animation was made for the round container in specific, as it would be a lot more blocks I'd need to do to make it work for all of them. It is just subtracting the index and the total items, so that way it works in counterclock in clockwise mode. Because you can set the container itself between clockwise and counterclockwise. Similar to the horizontal and vertical containers being the same thing. I'll pull that up just to show. If I click this, this animated box container, horizontal or vertical. This container, clockwise or counterclockwise. Show you it off. The animation will stay at the end until it is, in until anything in there is interacted with. The hover on hover functions, all that uses a specific second set of, of transforms so that it can be done on top of the animation as well without interrupting it. Beyond that, once generated like this, you can see we can load this one up as well. If I set it to the round one, it's an animation that turns the round thing into a straight line. And this group, as you notice, we have this chicken sandwich. I have it pre-compiled already over here. But let's say I wanted to rename sandwich to taco. If I hit compile, go over and over, click on it, and have it reload, it is now a taco. I'll change it back to sandwich because that's how I have it stored. 
if you want to add more things, you can click this, add another function. You can go out of the editor tab. It defaults here because this is where it tries to save the files. Those files are what happens when you save a chain, and it saves it using the name you type in over here. If this is empty and you try to save, it'll automatically select this to have you insert the name. On there, you got these. And I believe that is the current list of what we have going on over here. You create groups, you can rename groups, remove them. You can do this, and yeah. That is the current state in which we have the good old fax fancy enemy control plugin. You can find it on GitHub, the good old asset store, and I will update it as long as I keep thinking things to put in it.